Hi students, welcome to the notes on periodic trends. Get out your science notebook, let's get started. As always, we're gonna start with the essential question. I would write this at the top of your page and really focus on this question as we go through the notes. What are the periodic table trends for atomic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity? Remember, you need to answer this in a deep way, so you need to be able to explain what these trends are as well as what each of those definitions mean. Let's start with atomic radius. The definition of atomic radius is just the size of an atom from the center of a nucleus to the edge of the outer electron shell. You're probably familiar with radii or radius in math where you just have a circle and it's from the center to the outside edge. And we're kind of considering atoms to be the same thing, only it's a three-dimensional model. So here you can see an example of, this is an element of nitrogen, and you can see the atomic radius is from the center of the nucleus to the outer edge of the electron shell. Now this nucleus has a radius of 0.7 angstroms, but we're not gonna get into the detail of specific numbers. We're just gonna look at the general relative atomic radius. How do the atomic radiuses relate to each other based on their position on the periodic table? If you take a look at this periodic table and it's organized by atomic radius, the relative atomic radius, you might be able to see a trend. If you notice in the upper right hand corner, the elements are relatively small, they have a small radius. And the lower left hand corner, the elements are very large. That is the relative trend on the periodic table. Elements get larger as they're going down groups and from left or from right to left across a period. Remember, groups are columns and periods are rows. Let's look at another trend, ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove an outer shell electron. You might remember we drew Bohr models of elements, and here's a few Bohr models based on the different sections of the periodic table. But if you take a look at this trend, typically the higher the ionization energy, the more in the upper right-hand corner the elements are, and the lower the energy, the more in the lower left-hand corner. So the trend, as you see here, is increasing ionization energy going up groups and going from left to right across a period. It's pretty much the exact opposite of atomic radius. Now, we're gonna learn a little bit more about something called the octet rule. I'm not gonna explain it right now, but I want you to, be, to, to know that this trend is influenced by the octet rule, which deals with atoms and their electrons. The last trend we're gonna learn about is electronegativity. And some people call it electron affinity because it's an atom's ability to attract or be attracted to electrons in a chemical bond. We're gonna talk a lot about chemical bonds later and how elements bond to one another. And electronegativity is a big aspect of that. Now, if you take a look at this periodic table organized by electronegativity, you can kind of see the trend. In fact, the trend is relatively the same as ionization energy. The higher the electron affinity elements are in the upper right hand corner and the lower ones are in the lower left hand corner. So that's the trend, increasing electronegativity going up groups and from left to right across a period or across each period. This trend as well is influenced by the octet rule. Now, one thing to note, if you look on the very right, there's a special family called the noble gases, and we'll learn a little bit more about element families. But this family doesn't attract electrons anymore because it's already full of them. It's reached its potential, which is one of the reasons why they call it the noble gas family. That's it. That's the end of our notes. I wanted to introduce those three trends and talk about what they are. You'll have a little bit of a practice, but before you do that, take a moment to review these notes, highlight those key terms, and underline any essential information. Do you have any questions? Maybe ponder and ask questions or seek answers to those questions. And finally, summarize that essential question. Now, when you summarize it, try to have some type of a claim, maybe some evidence and some reasoning to be able to get some in-depth answer to that question. All right, good luck.